of the Historical Preservation Board to order. Denise, do you want to do roll call? Yes. Um, board member Bracey is out tonight. Board member Field. Field. Present. Board member Fisher. Board member Grove. Here. Board member Kastner. Nope. Board member Miller. Here. Board member Price. Here. Board member Lady. Here. And board member Spratlin. Here. Thank you. Uh, I have a suggestion about uh, the agenda. Oh, excuse me, we have to put the minutes, sorry. Um, uh, we have, um, anyone will make a motion to approve the agenda from last month? So moved. Second? For this month? Last month. Right. The minutes uh, of the Chair May Grove. 15th meeting? Uh, Chair Grove, the item that's uh, before the board at this point is approval of the agenda. It's excuse me, sorry. Uh, do we want to approve the agenda? And it's been suggested that we flip around and have the COA first and talk about the grant application second. So if there's agreement, will somebody make a motion? So moved. To move item 6A in front of item 5A. I'll second. Okay. I'll, uh, um, anybody opposed? Uh, approval. Okay. Can All you right. please use the voting board, please? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Oops. this thing. Aye, aye. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, okay. All right. So moved. So we'll move the agenda. I hope that's okay with the applicant if we switch that around. All right, uh, now the minutes to be approved. Anyone may want to make a motion to approve the May 15th minutes? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? We do we have to? All those in favor? Okay, motion carried. All right, let me make sure I don't miss anything. Public comment. Do we have any public comment tonight? Does anybody want to? Look and General. see if anybody signed in. We have a public comment. Um, our, as everybody knows, um, for public comment, if you would give your name and your address, and also uh, keep your comments to three minutes. If you're at two and a half minutes, you'll get a yellow card for Denise, and at three minutes, you'll get a red card. So the first person on the agenda is Marky Clute. Hello, I'm Margie Clute at 1467 West Briarwood Avenue. Um, I would like to correct and clarify for the record some public comments that Pab Ch Pam Chadbourne made at the last HPB meeting on May 15th regarding comments I made as a member of HPB on February 22nd during the COA hearing regarding the new development at 2679 West Main Street known as Littleton Mixed Use Project. She made the comment that a four-story building was approved, and in fact, a three-story building was approved. She also stated that I made a vote for economic development, when in fact, I only read the mission statement of the Historical Preservation Board, which states, the Historical Preservation Board works to preserve the built environment that gives a unique sense of place and identity to our community. Further, the Historical Preservation Board encourages reinvestment and compatible growth, which enhances Littleton's economic vitality. This statement can be found at the bottom of tonight's agenda. I did not vote for economic development, as stated by Pam Chadbourne. Thank you very much. Thank you, Margie. Uh, we have one more, Pam Claiborne. Let's 
see, I'm Pam Chadbourne. I live a block and a half from here. And um, a couple of things. I appreciate uh, Ms. Ms. Klute's correction. However, um, I think what I heard in February was that economic development was a good thing for Historic Preservation Board to do. And the, the only way that Historic Preservation Board supports economic development is through historic preservation, the way I read that statement. Historic preservation all through the documents, the design documents for downtown and for the historic district, talk about the economic value of historic preservation, and it is critical to maintain a critical mass of historic structures so that this value can be maintained. The character of any district is eroded every time something that doesn't fit well is added because it changes the character, it changes the car charm. If we had strongly developed integration ideas that next to this, this one step would be allowed and things like that, transitions, um, that would be one thing. But Littleton Mixed Use went way too far in mass. It is huge. Notice how I'm holding out my arms. It fills the lot, which the prior structure in no way did. It was a one-story structure, and it had several buildings on a lot with maybe a two-story in the back. Um, <laughs> Littleton Mixed Use is not at all the same. It changes the character, and it's next to the Carnegie Library and the Masonic Lodge in a corner that's visible from Santa Fe. It is defining. Um, <laughs> adding a use for economic development, and that's what the bank is, the bank office is. That is not adding a building for historic character of the district. So... I th still think that mention, I stand on that. Um, I, no, economic development for that approval is not appropriate. Um, and I have other comments on record for the mass scale size of the project not being conforming. So continuing to make friends, I wanted to mention um, the grant approval for the Duncan House is by an applicant who has several infill projects in the downtown area. Um, even though the application says it's a residence, the staff report correctly reports it's a business. I've heard it's the business site for that construction development. So I'm a little uncomfortable as a taxpayer of the city that we have enabled a business to make a lot of money, and now that business wants improvement money, tax dollars, for improving the business building. Bristlecone did it. Maybe it's okay. I don't know. Last, I want to mention Littleton Listens on Thursday night and Saturday. It's about downtown parking. Downtown parking waiver that the Historic Preservation Board gives is a problem, I think, for downtown. So I want people to know there are a couple opportunities to talk about it this week. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Okay. So let's go down to the public hearing for the COA. And just a, a quick review on the public hearing process. I need my notes to make sure I went right. So we'll uh, open the public hearing in just a minute. We'll hear from staff and the board can ask questions. Then the applicant or the representative can come up and speak to the board. Uh, we'll have an opportunity for public comment. Again, they will adhere to the same rules as we just had. They can speak for three minutes, give your name and address. At two and a half minutes, you get a yellow card at red card at three minutes. And then uh, after that time, the applicant has an opportunity to give a rebuttal. And then the public hearing will be closed. And then we'll, board will have a discussion. We'll have a motion uh, to approve, deny, or continue. And then um, those of you that are not interested in the next sessions are welcome to leave. If you want to stay, you can stay for the whole meeting. So let's go ahead and open uh, the public hearing for COA for Duncan House at 5503 South Prince, and that's HPB Resolution 10-217. So, Dennis. Great. Thank you. I'm Dennis Wayne, planner with the Community Development Office. This is a, as Pam said, the chairwoman said, this is a COA for the Duncan residents. And as uh, you may have looked at your agenda, you also see this again. Yes. 
Could you just please speak in the microphone? Okay. You will see again that this shows up in the grant request, too. There, it's one of the three grant requests for this very project. This is part of a larger project that the applicant's been looking at. He, he's looking at a multiple year project where he wants to go in and not only do the replacement of the siding and the trim, but also wants to look at repairing and replacing windows as necessary, as well as uh, the storm windows and looking at how best to do that. So those will come back for a future COA in, uh, at some point. But the owner uh, and the applicant has owned this property for a long time. It is a commercial property and um, he, he has his photographic business there, and so he has owned it for a long time, wants to improve it, and actually over time maybe add, add to it in terms of additional building. Uh, the location of the building is, uh, it's on South Prince Street, 5503 South Prince. It's at the corner of Prince and uh, Berry, so it's on the southwest corner, and uh, has residential to the north and to the south of it as well as behind it and residential across the street from it, catty corner from um, the uh, Lilton Center and the, uh, the park that is there as well. Duncan residents, very familiar, I think, to most of these. You're coming in from, from, uh, from Santa Fe on Prince Street. It's a very visible structure. Uh, it, 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 I think, greets visitors, and it's something that people uh, are familiar with. What he's looking at doing is replacing the siding. And if you look at these photos and look at the photos in your, your packet, you'll start to see some a lot of pitting on the siding. It's original cedar siding. And as you go through here, it's it's in fairly bad shape. They've taken it apart, and, and Brad Peterson, who is the applicant for this, can explain more in terms of what they found. It's an unusual situation in terms of not finding boards behind it. It goes directly into the studs and then into the house. Um, and so it uh, has some additional issues as well. And instead of uh, covering the siding, they will actually be taking siding off um, and replacing that. The one condition that we would like to see on that is that as the applicant and the, and the contractor work through this, that they take off boards. If there are boards which can be repaired, we prefer to have those repaired rather than replaced, and something that can't be done probably until they actually take those apart. It's possible none of them can be repaired. They're, uh, they're over 100 years old. They've, they've done a good job of, of uh, protecting the house, but they may all need to be replaced. And I think you start to see around the bottom particularly, there's a lot of, a lot of rot, and as they've taken these off, they've seen even more rot. Uh, around the corners, where real, on the south side here, where it really gets hit by the sun and the weather, and it's in, in quite bad shape. This is one of the boards, and, uh, and um, Brad actually brought one of these in. The applicant brought this in for us, too, uh, so you can kind of see what it's looking like in terms of what it is. He's been able to find, um, by taking it apart and, and looking at it, he's look, found a mill in town that actually can mill the exact uh, profile of the siding, so go back and replace it with cedar siding, uh, so it'd be cedar as, as it has, was originally, um, and replace that with the same format, same size. So, it's a historic landmark, and it's something unusual. We don't usually see these coming through for COAs. We see a lot of properties that are in the historic district, but not individual <laughs> landmarks. And so we haven't had a lot of experience in the last couple of years over what this means. What it means is that we not only use the five criteria that we're familiar with in terms of compatibility and the ones that you see first, but there are an additional 20 criteria that have to go through. And so in your staff reports, you saw those five criteria and the, the applicant's response to those and the staff response to those, comments on those. And then you saw an additional 20 criteria. A lot of duplication in there, a lot of more refinement of going in because with the landmarks, the thought was that they wanted to have more detail. So they wanted to look at detail in terms of how do, does this actually uh, meet our cri larger criteria, even in terms of compatibility and actually fitting not only with the district and, and the area surrounding it, but the integrity of the house itself, the integrity of the property. So we've got the first five criteria, which you're familiar with, the adverse effects, um, conformance with guidelines, compatibility with structures on the property, district compatibility, and demolitions. And then there are additional 20 criteria. And I'm not going to list those and go through those because it's a lot, but it's, it's basically just a refinement of what we have. The staff recommendation for this is to approve the COA for the Duncan House at 5503 South Prince Street with the following condition. The applicant and his contractor will repair the siding and trim 
that is that which is reparable and only replace that siding that is not reparable. And that's kind of our report. Questions on that from, from the board? I have one. Dennis? Mm -hmm. um, it says here on page 3 of 10, criteria for properties in a historic district. Is this in a historic district? This is not a historic district. Okay, so it's so just a, it's an individual landmark. It's an individual landmark, right. Mm -hmm. We do have, as you know, properties which are both um, Milton Town Hall, uh, some of the other properties that are in the historic main district, uh, Main Street historic district, excuse me, gotcha. are also individual landmarks, but this one is not. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Who, who establishes the criteria if, if a, a board is considered to be uh, in good shape or um, is to be removed or is beyond sorry, repair? Who, who decides whether a board is in good shape or is, is beyond repair? Well, that's always a good question. And, and, and um, the contractor that the applicant has, has has looked at hiring, and he's gotten bids from multiple contractors, but the one he's most comfortable with has a lot of experience uh, with historic properties. And so the thought was that they could determine that. We could uh, ask him to go out and you know, hire an independent person as well to decide that. But it's, it's, and you may know better than I, but my understanding would be you really can't determine it until you take it off. Um, and so you're probably taking it off, determining, determining, you know, and so decide keep or not at that point. Uh, so it's, it, it may be a more iterative process in terms of a little bit back and forth. There's how many new boards do we need? How many boards can we actually repair? Anything else? Uh, the applicant is here tonight and uh, uh, has some additional photographs if you want to see those. and. and it can tell you more about the bids that he's received and uh, what he's looking at, his interest in, in, in the larger project. If you have questions about that as well, but uh, how this fits into that. But um, he is here and willing to and ready to come up and answer questions. Okay. Thank you, Dennis. Okay, we'll hear from the applicant. And please give us your name and address. Hi, Brad Peterson, 5503 South Duncan. And uh, I thought I'd just share these pictures with you because really the, the issue at stake is the quality of the siding and how bad it is. And I'm not exactly sure how to use this. First time doing it. But some close-ups here might give you a better idea of kind of what I'm dealing with. Um, you know, there's the first picture. And I don't really have a whole lot to add to what Dennis said, but it seems like the, the siding has kind of reached its lifespan. Um, and I can give these two individually once we look up here, but you can see it's, it's weathered, it's, it's getting tough. I just want it to look nice, new, fresh. The, the cedar that, we, that we'll have milled is coming out of a, a company called Reed Mill, and they do this kind of thing. The profile is almost identical uh, to what he actually showed over there, uh, so it will look identical to what's there now. We'll just pick and choose the pieces that make sense and make it look fresh and nice. That's really all we want to do. No, I think he mentioned, too, that we're going to be removing some of the siding. Um, I don't plan to do that. I think we, it, it would make sense to go over the top of it. Once we start removing some of those, um, some of the siding, we're going to get into some insulation issues and some other things. So the contractor and I, we discussed it at length, and he said it might make sense just to go over the top of it. So, uh, again, we won't be removing a whole lot of stuff. It'll look identically the same. Uh, we're not going to go for windows. It just, it just needs to freshen up, and we think it's time. Here's another photo. You can just see if we go and we try to paint this, oh, excuse me. If we go and try to paint this, uh, the outcome's just not gonna look great. You know, I think the best solution again is just replace what needs replacing and go from there. Please just make sure you're speaking Thanks, to the microphone to have a clear record. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. So, um, but that's what we wanna do, quite simple. Again, just a cosmetic freshen up of the exterior. Um, and that's it, do you have any questions or? Just to clarify, you said, are they removing the siding or you're putting it over the existing We're siding? We're going to be probably putting it over the top of it, just because we don't want to get underneath um, and discover all kinds of things. We removed one board just to discover what was under it, and it turns out there's no lap behind it. It's just strict siding, paper, insulation, and inside wall. So if we get into that, structurally, the, you know, it, it, it could affect the house. Um, and it's just going to open up a whole gan of worms, and there's really no reason to do it, we don't think. You know? Brad, are you going to sheathe 
over it with OSB or something like that? We thought about side? it, but I think what that'll do, Mike, is that'll sort of make the trim on the windows very thin because we're adding another five-eighths of an inch to that. These houses are designed to breathe. We think that'll make the house not breathable and it'll sort of cup the cedar over time. So again, you know, having a little bit of build experience and having met with a contractor, we think the best solution is just go over the top of it with something that looks identical. So we'll use jam extenders at the window then to Stuff, Yeah, bring exactly. It yeah, or remove it when it needs to be removed. Okay. <laughs> so, no. um, but yeah, that's what we want to do. Just fresh it up, make it, you know, worthy of its designation. You know, it's some kind of a perfectionist and I look at it every day and it sort of bothers me that it's starting to pucker and, you know, I could paint it, but... You know, you're throwing good money after bad. I think that what's underneath the paint's really critical to make Looks it Looks like last. there's more paint than siding right now. Right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, and it's got so many layers of it and, and caulking, as you can see in the photograph there. It's just, I could spend a whole lot of money. It's just never going to look fresh. Do you have any pictures of the siding at grade or close to the grade? I think Dennis may have had one earlier, but... A hundred years ago, you could get away with putting siding pretty much down to the ground, and now right, over time, the building soil codes require to, right. that you go. So do you have a plan for there is one. The, the distance between the ground and we do. It's, your siding it's, will start? Luckily, um, because the house was restored, I think, in the late 90s, they put it on steel girders, and they elevated it slightly, so that's really not an issue. Yeah. We probably have a good six inches to play with, so not a problem. And again, we're not going for windows. We thought about it initially. Um, we're not going to deal with that. Really, just what we're asking for is trim and siding. So, I have a question. What's that? Um, I have a question for you. If you're not removing the siding, how are you going to determine whether or not the boards are salvageable? A good question. We'll just basically tap on it and see what's in there. When we, if we have to remove something, we might move it temporarily and put it back. Um, it'll just be sort of a process of discovery and making good, you know, common sense choices as we go along. You know, and I have a little bit of a build background and I'll be on site, so. Um, I wish I could, you know, it, we just don't know what we're gonna discover, so. I have another question, and you're probably not gonna know the answer to this one. Okay, go ahead. Do you know the, the source of the original siding? Back a hundred years ago? No idea. No. <laughs> it would just be. I wish I did. It's neat stuff. You know, it lasts a long time if you take care of it. But thanks. Um, but now, uh, anything else? Yeah. And thanks for the opportunity. By the way, I really appreciate it. You know, it's nice uh, yeah, to have. I actually, this let me just clarify. I'm just kind of confused because it, it says the, that the proposed project is to remove all existing cedar siding, but it's sounding like you're really just going to clad. Yeah, originally when we did, when we thought about it, we thought it might make sense until we looked underneath, you know, what was there. And so we pivoted and said, well, this isn't going to work. This is opening up a can of worms. Structurally, this house is being cobbled together by these, by these panels or the siding. So we just, it's, it's really not a, a great choice, I don't think. So, and it's cheaper if we don't do the USB also, so. I'm sorry, I want to be clear. clear. So you're going to go over it? You're not going to take it off? That's the plan right now, yes. Yeah. And there'll be a house wrap put on that so that it, you know, it breathes. There's a more, uh, uh, somewhat of a vapor barrier there. So, so. this <clears throat> testing the boards to see if they're good or not is not going to happen. You're just going to go over it. Correct. Yeah, that's what we plan to do now, you know. So. And, yeah, I drive by it, you know, and everyone sees it. And, you know, they keep asking me, when are you going to paint your house? And, you know, I've been putting this off for about two years, and I think it's time. Any other questions? Good. All right, well, thanks again for the opportunity. All right, so um, do we have any public comment? No. No, okay, so no public comment? And uh, so I guess we don't need any rebuttal. So what, let's go ahead and close the public hearing. And this is Chair Grove. Would you like to ask if there's anyone in the audience who would like to speak who didn't sign up? Okay. Is there anybody that would like to speak that didn't sign up? Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and close the public hearing. And we can have uh, a discussion and we can ask questions of staff and then we can look to a motion. So let me open up to the board. What are you kind of thinking about this? Is this 
thoughts to throw out to the group? Just kind of high level, and then we can go through the criteria. One of the concerns I have at high level is just the proposal that we heard is a little bit different than what was in the COA application and how that might um, affect some of these criteria. Good point. So does that mean we're leaning towards maybe um, asking the applicant to resubmit their COA because it is different? You could go down the criteria and... And, and explain to them what we want to change. I, I would have a question for staff about whether or not this meets the condition that you placed within your staff recommendation, this pivot to covering the siding with, the existing siding without, you know. Right, and, and um, my apologies to the applicant. I, my understanding was that they, the thought was that the siding would be replaced. Uh, so you're going to be taking it all off, and, and I knew they did have the problem with what was underneath it, but my understanding was that they were going to replace it all um, or try and repair it, but not go over the, the exterior. Um, and some of the material that I've read in kind of looking at new siding, uh, there's a thought that it, you can trap, it's not always an advantageous thing to go over existing siding. Sometimes you can trap moisture in there. Um, it's, and I, that may be different than the information that the contractor and Brad have. Um, so it is, it's a different thought that, uh, and we can go through the criteria and, and see how the board feels about them. So. Okay, are you ready to go through the criteria? Okay. I'm going to have to, you know, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, so. Uh, in, in Chair Grove, I, if I could just make a suggestion, if, if the board is leaning towards a continuance, what the way that would work is that um, you, you'd continue it to the next meeting You'd ask staff to work with the applicant to, re to uh, make the changes. And it, probably some uh, guidelines as how you'd like to see in the resubmittal would be, would be worthwhile. Or you could ask the applicant to voluntarily withdraw and resubmit. It's another option. Um, I'm, just, I'm thinking of the interest of the applicant. We probably should go through the criteria to give them some direction. So if we do ask them to resubmit, they have some guidelines. Okay. Uh, no. Unfortunately, the public hearing is closed, so we can't do that at this point. Okay, so we have, starting on 3 of 10, we have, uh, first of all, we start with the uh, high level, the five high level uh, criteria. So let's take the high level ones kind of one by one, and then the 20 will go through a, a little differently. But um, in terms of the first criteria, it won't alter, destroy, or adversely affect the architectural landscape. Thoughts on that one? Oh, there, that's just where there's a contradiction. I mean, because what it's saying is that it's going to remove the original siding. And uh, I think putting new siding over the existing siding is, I don't know, kind of a. That doesn't seem right. That doesn't. Um, I, I guess it, it doesn't. It kind of it, alters or just. Yeah, I'd say it alters uh, the architectural character, the original historic designation. I know. Yeah, Dan, I think to that point further, I, I, you know, to understand how this would work on top of the existing siding, how the flashing, the details at the trim, at the corners, at the, the freeze up above, you know, all those things I think come into play on if it's, you know, still, you know, still compliant with that architectural feature. Okay, so are, am I hearing from everyone that it, it, it does alter because it's not uh, fixing what's there, but kind of getting rid Flying of it, yeah, replacing it, yeah. okay. All right, let's go to number two. Uh, hold on. Uh, the proposed work is otherwise in conformance with applicable adopted design guidelines. Is it, um, and if you look at some of the things like preserve original building materials, repair deteriorated primary building materials, match the building materials, or cover the building materials with new materials, is inappropriate. 
So thoughts there. Here it says, avoid removing original materials in 3.32. It's really, historic preservation really advocates repair rather than remove. So we're, so, thoughts? I'm, I'm just back to my question with staff, and I, I think that's kind of where we're heading here, is, is it seems that the work, the scope of work has pivoted from what the staff analyzed and made the recommendation on as far as the COA application went. So I'm not sure that's what I was looking for staff for to, to kind of see whether or not this conditionally met would be met by pivoting and covering the existing siding versus going in there and replacing some and keeping what's reparable. So I don't really know how to suggest moving beyond that. Well, there's a tendency to want to preserve original and repair rather than replace, right? So we are looking for repair rather than replace. Okay. Are we ready to move on to three? Uh, the compatibility is uh, the work is visually compatible with designated historic structures located on the property in terms of design, finish, material, scale, mass, and height. Does that apply? There's these other, I went by and there's like a garage back there, it looks like. I think one of the things that we don't know is what it will really look like to layer siding on top of siding and, and what that really does to um, the architectural details of the house. It seems to me, and I don't know, Dennis, if you are familiar with this or Andrea, but it, it would kind of like stick out. I mean, I think that's the issue, and when the applicant was talking about that originally, he was saying that you know, they would add to the trim, I think, so add to the depth of that. So it would be a different look, I think. But as uh, as Kim said, I think that it would be good to have more detail in terms of what does that look like. Do we have some examples of, around of, of, of where that's been applied, where we've actually had a siding put on top of siding, and you know, what, what, how does that change things? So. Okay. And then we go to uh, district compatibility. Um, the proposed work is visually compatible with the development on adjacent properties. Just not applicable. Okay. And then since that one, that's not applicable, demolitions. Uh, in terms of partial demolition is required for renovation or it impacts the importance of architectural integrity of the structure. Thoughts on that one? Well, as Dan pointed out, it says here, while not all, all of the original siding may need to be replaced, it, none of it will be replaced. It'll just be covered, right? So I'm not sure how you, how you deal with that, Pam. There's, there's no, no mm -hmm. demolition at all. It's right. The only demolition would be window treatments, I suppose, you know, window trim have to be removed. Okay, so for the um, the first five criteria, not looking at the twenty, um, it, it we're really uh, kind of leaning towards rejecting or asking the applicant to redo it based on uh, number one, number two, three, four, and five don't apply so much. Is that what we're agreeing to? I'd agree that uh, criteria one, two, and three are the, the driving factors. Okay, and that we're, what I think we're looking for is if we are gonna go in replacement, we want what that looks like. Um, do you wanna just look over the next 10 uh, criteria real quickly and see if anything else in terms of giving direction to the applicant that we feel is appropriate? So let's just take a second to do that. Madam Chair, yes. where are those criteria? Oh, okay, if, if you start on five, five of 10, and believe me, I've already lost them in my packet. 
Can you see that? So the additional 20? Yes. Starts on five of 10. So looking at the first 10, is there any uh, criteria that the current COA does not meet that we want to call out? seems to me is number five my I circled five, yeah. Yeah. So number five on the additional twenty. Any others? I don't have that page. Page six of ten. In the COA application. Let me see if I can Stop find it. it. There we go. Did you find it, Kim? It's confusing. Yes. I think 11 is also for the yeah. same reason that 5 is. Okay, so let's go on to the next. Oh, group. sorry, the next. No, that's fine. Pardon me. There's nothing else. I know. What about 13? Not you said 11? 11. Yeah. Ted? Yes, ma'am. How about 13? Not applicable. Thirteen hasn't, the building hasn't changed enough to okay. be, yeah. and for that to be applicable. I'd say, I'd say 14 is, is mm -hmm. TBD, just depending on uh, what they're proposing. Well, the, you know, some of those details that David talked about in the, in the uh, Gable Sort of the uh, those features still uh, stay. Okay, and then number fifteen, <coughs> historic features shall be repaired rather than replaced, right? Right. And then um, sixteen applies. How about sixteen? Don't think it it applies. Okay. And then. Any others? So we're looking at, uh, in terms of lack of compliance or whatever, 5, 11, 14, and 15. Any others? Is that it? Okay. So now we're we'll looking for a motion. Before we put a motion on the table, can we kind of agree, or somebody want to put a motion on what kind of summarizing what we're thinking, and I can give you the numbers um, in terms of why we're thinking about rejecting the concept. Uh, well, let me ask you this, Brandon. What we have in front of us is a replacement. What we've been told is a um, putting the siding over it. So which are we thinking about? Which do we want to deal with? It's just a matter of how you want to do it. You can either, you could deny the application for the reasons you said, uh -huh. um, that, which would give the applicant the opportunity to resubmit if they so wished. You could continue it with, you know, having given the, the applicant some guidance as to what to do. And then the applicant can work with staff, and you can put direction to, to staff to work with the applicant to come back at the next date certain to uh, have an amended application that would better suit the needs of the board. Or the applicant could voluntarily withdraw the application and resubmit. And that would be the applicant's call. So two of those are for you to consider. One is for the applicant. Okay. So we have the choice of... Um, Continue or deny is what I believe that is where the board is going. Of course, it's your choice. And thoughts on that? For, for question for staff. For, as, as far as the difference between the two, what is best for both the applicant and staff to move this... Continuation today has to be the best because it, it's That's certainly going to be the fastest. Just want to make sure uh, for the applicant, uh, they can come back next month if we um, deny it or if they withdraw it. It's typically a three-month process to actually right. from the beginning okay. to the end. So. 
Thank you. So if it's continued, they could come back as soon as next month. Next month, right. Correct. So I think we're leaning, leaning towards continuance, right? And uh, does somebody feel comfortable making a motion? And I can tell you which ones were that we... And, and, and Chair Grove, for a, a motion to continue, you don't need to list the reasons why you're continuing it. I think that's been already, you know, elicited in, the, in your conversation today, so. Okay, does somebody want to make a, a motion for uh, continuing to a certain date? Do we have to decide on the date before we can make the motion? Yeah, you're, it need to be to a date Fine. certain, so I. Yeah, what's what's the next? Uh, Preservation. What's the July? July, I mean, July 10th. Oh, it's 10th? No, it's. Uh, no, it's, third. It's, third week. Monday. It's the 17th. 17th. Hmm. 17th. 17th. July 17th. Right. If you make it, you can look at the. So, Madam Chair, I move to continue the okay. public hearing on HPB Resolution 10 2017 concerning the Certificate of Historic Appropriateness for the Duncan House at 5503 South Prince Street to July 15th, 17th, sorry, 17th 2017, in order to. I, that's where I need a little bit of help. In, in order to reconsider the. To, to reconsider the application? Correct. Okay. Second? I'll second. Okay. Hold on. Uh, we will have to vote. Okay. Go ahead. All right. It's unanimous motion carried. So hopefully we give the applicant some direction from what we're thinking. And hopefully they'll come back next. Okay. All right. Now we move to general business where we're going to talk about uh, the historic Main Street uh, grant applications. Do you have extras applications printed out? Thank you. Next item is the applications for the 2017 Main Street Historic District Grants. The grant fund uh, comes out of the general fund and City Council determines each year how much they're going to put into the grant fund. The grant fund is established, as you know, in City Code. Uh, this year, again, the City Council uh, gave $50,000 to the fund and out a lot of that. Um, there are three grant requests this year, totaling $76,440, which represents 61% of the $125,185 total cost of these projects, uh, given that they're not asking for all the money that the projects are costing. So the projects are costing $125,000. Of that, they're asking $76,440 as grant. Tonight, we'll, there, there will be first of two opportunities for the board to discuss the applications. This is a process that the board installed several years ago, thinking that it was very beneficial to have the first night, have the applicants uh, actually make a presentation. I'll give a presentation first, and then they'll be here to answer questions. And then the board has a month to go back and, and look at the, the properties, think more about the grant applications, what would be beneficial, what best meets the uh, criteria for the grant program, and then come back at the next meeting and actually make that allocation itself. And we'll have a resolution and a public hearing for that. Uh, the board will meet again on July 17th to, to discuss these applications and award the funding. The review criteria, there are two sets of review criteria. The first is standard criteria. These are the ones that are actually established by city code and, and written in the code. And they're pretty basic things. They're a, a property must be within the Main Street Historic District or be an individual landmark that's within what is defined in downtown in, the, in this section of the code and be have a commercial use. So if it's a residential structure uh, and, and a landmark, it would not be eligible in the downtown. But we don't have any of those in downtown. We have those outside of the downtown, but no individual landmarks within that downtown area that actually are uh, residential. They're all commercial. Uh, application must also be for one of six qualifying types of project 
and architectural design assistance, facade work, maintenance, new signage, graffiti removal, and other improvements for new tenants. The review criteria, the second set is discretionary criteria, and those are the ones set by the board. And you've uh, changed those over the years, and, and those evolve from time to time depending on what the program of the board is. And those are reflected, I think, in the criteria that we have today. All seven elements of the application must be completed. Preference is given to properties that have not had previous grant funding. Um, Properties that have joined the district within the last 12 months have an expanded set of possible project types, including um, things that uh, other are not eligible or not uh, options for properties that have been in longer. That was an attempt to encourage more properties to join the district. That includes um, actually some internal um, projects, whereas the typical grant program is only for external for facade work and also some uh, ADA work and other things that could happen on the interior as well as some more detailed uh, restoration work. Um, there's also an extended period. They can actually have gotten their building permit within 24 months of, uh, prior, whereas the general program for other projects is within 12 months. So there is a retroactive funding program. Typically, this extends that retroactive program. Um, projects are evaluated for their relative visual impact on the historic character of the district, and projects are evaluated for their ability to respond to health, safety, and welfare issues as well. The first project is the Western Masonic Lodge at 5718 South Rapp Street. Um, the project is to grind and replace the mortar on the north side of the lodge. This is the fourth grant in, uh, that they've come through. They've done one side of the building, each of those grant applications, and succeeded uh, with each of those that completed each of those grant applications. Earlier grants have successfully completed mortar replacement on the west, south, and east faces. This will be on the north side. The project cost is $23,400. They're asking for 80% of that, which is, again, a one of those evaluation criteria that uh, the board has actually established in the past. As a cap, it's not a mandatory cap. Uh, the board has never gone over that, however, but it is a cap that the board has set, and it's kind of set the precedent for. Um, and they're therefore asking for $18,720. Uh, it's not new to the district, and they've had three bids submitted, so they actually have three bids for the work that, they've, that they're looking for doing. Um, the second project is the Littleton Creamery. Uh, 2675 West Alamo, we have a new owner on this property. Um, Vandell Antiques is the user in there, they're the, they're the tenant. They want to demolish the back addition and replace with new construction. They want to add air conditioning, which is, the building has not had. This is the second grant application in recent years. You may remember uh, several years ago they had an application for repairing and replacing part of the structure for the front porch. Um, the, the foundation for the front porch was pretty weak, and so they went back and replaced part of that. Um, the project cost on this is $92,135. Um, they're asking for $50,000, which still only comes up to 54%. Uh, it's not new to the district, and they have two bids currently for construction, at least at the time of the uh, application, and one for air conditioning. And they are continuing to seek uh, bids, and the applicant is here tonight and can talk more about that uh, in terms of uh, the difficulty that they've, she's had uh, trying to get bids. And you, I think you may remember we've had that for the last three, four, or five years. Uh, these tend to be relatively small projects. It's a very hot market. Um, and it's hard to get contractors to bid on small projects. Um, and so every applicant we've had, I think, has, has had some troubles with that. Um, I think the only one, that, I think even the Masonic Lodge has had some trouble, but they've been successful again this year with three, three bids. The third one is for the Duncan House, the project that you just saw is COA. And might mention that in every case when there is a grant um, application and grants uh, money actually awarded, there is a COA requirement for that grant award that there has to be, before a building permit can be issued for that project, either a staff or board um, COA has to be um, approved. And so uh, that will be true for uh, Masonic Lodge and for this and for, um, and also, excuse me, for the uh, Lilton Creamery. So each of those will require a COA, and as has been true in the past as well. Now, so you're familiar with this project. They're looking at um, uh, replacing the siding and trim, 
uh, first grant application for the Duncan House, they've not had a grant application in the past, so this is their first. Whereas we've had one for Masonic Lodge and had one for Littleton Electric, so they all begin to st distinguish some, themselves a little bit. Um, and again, it's part of a larger project over the time to replace the, the storm windows, gutters, downspouts, uh, windows. Uh, so this is the first phase of a larger project. This phase addresses only the siding and trim. The applicant is not asking for grant money for the painting of the new siding, but actually uh, the applicant will pay for that himself. Um, project cost is $9,650. Grant request is $7,720. That's 80% of the grant application. Uh, in your packets, you have uh, several attachments. The first attachment is the evaluation criteria. It goes through on this matrix where it's got the three projects across the top and down the side on the left. It has each of the uh, criteria. You have the standard criteria first, and then I think that doesn't do it. There's a way to do it. Let's see if I can get this to go. Uh, maybe not. Um, Anyway, if, <laughs> in your packets, uh, this didn't transfer well to a slide, but it does then also have the, um, the, the criteria that the board sets as well. So you know, it, all the criteria are on that. So you can kind of go through. Um, there are some which don't apply. Those are blank. There are some which uh, are colored and say yes. Uh, it does meet those criteria. In staff's opinion, the board may not agree with that. And, and we want you to go through all of these and make your own opinion on these. But this is you know, our, our initial take. And then also there are some that we think it does not, and so there's a no there as well. So, uh, Photographs from the project, Western Masonic Lodge. Uh, you can see you know, th there are some issues with, uh, with the, uh, the grouting of, for the brick and just the need to go back and actually scrape that out and replace that. And that's what they have been doing uh, over, over the last uh, three years. And so you can see some real success if you walk around the buildings. In the first year, they actually replaced not the, only the grouting, but they actually went through and replaced the front porch almost completely, uh, restructured that, uh, put new railings on it, things as well. So This is the Littleton Creamery. This is a historic shot now. The Creamery project is in the rear. The Creamery are in the, are in the front. Um, there are no historic photos of, of the Creamery from the, from the rear, unfortunately, that we could find. And um, again, that's true with Western Masonic Lodge for the side that we're looking at this time. But you can kind of see uh, it. The and the applicant is here as well, and. Uh, can talk more about this, but the, the rear structure was really an add-on, was really kind of a lean-to structure without a good foundation or any foundation, really, and uh, has always been problematic in terms of insulation and siding and, and just the way it functions. So the thought is they, they want to, as part of their application, they're looking for architectural design assistance. They have an architect they're working with, uh, so we will see a COA for that, board-level COA with uh, designs and materials, um, so you'll, you'll see a, a pretty finished product come back for that COA. This is the Duncan House. Again, you've seen those photographs, so I won't go through them all. Uh, but you know, the idea is that the siding's in bad shape and something needs to be done, whether it's total replacement or partial replacement on top or replacing all those. And again, this, this is the, the profile of the existing board and the profile, and the one that's checked there in the middle is the one that uh, the applicant has, has uh, agreed to with the uh, mill and also with the contractor that looks like it's the closest to, to what the existing board is. And that's it. So, questions about any of those? Dennis, I have one. <clears throat> if a property is in the... Littleton Main Street Historic District opt-in boundary. Mm -hmm. Is it ineligible for funding under this if it's not opted in? That is correct. It's only for properties that have opted into the district or have uh, agreed to individual designation outside the boundaries of... of How of far does that boundary go? So any commercial property in Littleton is eligible no. for part of the... Funding? No, it's only... Um, the only landmark properties that are eligible are those within what's defined in the code as downtown. And that is basically from the river to, to the railroad depression. 
and from Church Street up to um, uh, Crestline. So it doesn't, you know, there are no historic structures north of Crestline and nothing left south of Crestline. So uh, that was really the individual di the district. Now within the Main Street district, the, the opt-in boundary is really quite small. It really just is um, alley to alley, north and south. So the alley between Main Street and uh, Alamo on the south and Main Street and Powers on the north. And then it goes from um, behind the, the, uh, the Carnegie Library, so the east side of Santa Fe to uh, the east side of Bega Park, so the west side of the, of the railroad depression. Okay. So it's actually quite small. Gotcha. Second question, how much of a property has to be used for commercial use for it to be considered a commercial property? It's an excellent question, and the, the, the language isn't very clear. It just has commercial use, and so we, I, I don't know if we've ever run into that. Everything we've had so far downtown has been 100% commercial use. I think at one point, I think uh, the applicant, I think Brad has lived in the house as well. So I think it's been, it always was you know, first floor, second floor, so at least 50% it was, has been commercial over time. So it has not been defined to date. So. Okay. In light of the, uh, the continuation of, of, of the Duncan House, uh, project if the applicant uh, so chooses to um, amend uh, the amount for the grant is that uh, acceptable and, and, and how, how will that process work yeah sure I, now I, in July? It's, a, it's a good question could all of these of course are bids all these are estimates to some degree and so I don't know it's too much different than what we've seen in, in other cases um, where uh, an applicant has come through first for the grant money and then gone through and gotten you know, the COA and, and there have been some changes in the COA that comes after the fact typically. Um, you do have three bids in place for what you're proposing to do, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's what you're going to end up getting through the COA process doing. So there, there may be some amendment, but whatever the board sets as your, as your grant allocation will stay. Um, but it's dependent on them getting approval for the COA. It's true for all of them, yes. Each applicant has to, has to get approval, yes. So I think the ones that, um, Weston Masonic Lodge is a pretty simple COA process for that, you know, for replacing the, 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 the mortar, that's a staff level COA, because uh, it's replacing what's there with, you know, with similar material. Um, the, what the creamery is talking about again will be a board level because it's new it's demolition and new construction um and the architect will be involved and so we're really talking about you know, a lot more detail on that one and that may change you know as they get into it as well so but so let me just be clear on the creamery it's it's for the shed demolition and rebuilding correct. and the air conditioning correct mm -hmm. And do you remember off the top of the head how much was in each? I mean, it's in here, but I need to. It's, I don't remember off. Okay. Off, yeah, sorry. I can look really quickly here, I think. Uh, it, let's see, what page is that one? Let's see. Uh, how much is it? Just one, just one bid currently for the air conditioning. And that is nine thousand nine hundred forty-one dollars and ninety-nine cents. Oh, okay, here. So, so nine thousand of that here. Mm -hmm. And then the two bids that that they have for uh, the demolition construction is seventy-seven thousand seven hundred thirty dollars for one. Um, and the other one is seventy-seven thousand one ninety-four. They're amazingly similar. And then the architectural work, um, I believe, was six thousand, and that's in here uh, five thousand. Excuse me. Yes. Okay, here's the summary attachment A, I see it. Correct. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, yes. Um, Dennis, uh, I understand that both the Creamery and the Masonic Temple have received uh, his grants in the past. Correct. Was that work completed? Uh, yes, it was for both of them. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Now we hear from the applicants. Okay. I have one, one last question, Dennis. This owner, uh, 
Tampas? Tampas? Yes. Uh -huh. um, is that the same owner of all of those three buildings of that assemblage? No, she's purchasing just the creamery. Just the creamery, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. And the Papperts are, are selling all three, but they've broken them into individual parcels and, and, and individual ownership. So, Do you have any idea how large the addition will be on the uh, my, In talking to the applicant, my understanding is it would be comparable to what's there now. So no larger than what's now. It's pretty much a replacement of that. But um, they're talking about, I think, two bathrooms that they you know, don't have currently for that building you know, and, and 88 bathrooms, that type of stuff. So, it says kitchen uh, and things right. like that. Yeah. Okay. So. All right, thank you. Okay. Anything else? Okay, now we're here for All three applicants are here. Okay, so. good. Okay. Why don't we just go that down the list and start with the Masonic Lodge with the applicant or the representative? And if you'd state your name and your address, please. Good evening. I'm Jim Shoemaker. I think this is the fourth year in a row I've been before you, so uh, representing Western 22. And uh, sir, if you could please bring the microphone down to your mouth and speak into it, it'd be great. If you could bring the microphone down to your mouth and speak into it. I'm not Th used to these, can uh, you tell? No worries, thank <laughs> you. When you're watching the video, it gets very frustrating <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> not to hear it over here. You can't, don't speak the microphone, we can't hear on the video, so okay. it's really important very to speak good. the microphone. Uh, anyway, I'm uh, Jim Shoemaker, and I'm here representing Weston Lodge number 22 on Rapp Street. So uh, we are proposing to do the north side of the building this year, which will complete the building as far as the maintenance and the tuck pointing on that. So uh, that would be our goal, to be able to get a grant that would allow us to go ahead and finish that building out. That's really all I have to say. It's pretty much the same as it's been every year. Um, the 80% was based on the lowest bid that come in. That's fine. We will choose to use the middle bid that came in because that is the same contractor that done the last two sides. And he comes in and he gets it done in a very professional manner and he gets it done in a short period of time because he's on it. We always work around Western Welcome Week, so it won't be started until in September, the same as always, and it'll be done before weather is cold. So uh, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Questions? You've been a good steward of your building and these funds, and we appreciate that, Jim. Thank you very much. We try, and we appreciate all the help that you have given us because without that, these projects wouldn't have been possible. Is there anything else? And Jim, you've been pleased with the other sides and how the contractor has done their work and everything, I assume. Definitely, definitely. And to clarify, that contractor is the one with the 23-4 bid. Pardon me? That, that's the same contractor, the 23,400 bid, right? No, the one, that, the one that Dennis done on the bid, that would not be the same one because uh, Ron Pino is a bid and the actual bid is 26.5. Okay. But uh, the bid it was figured on is 23.4. Yeah, if we can get the 20% of the 26.5, that would be the 80%. That would be wonderful. You know, I mean, if you paid it all, it would be wonderful, too. But anyway, we're asking, and you can let us know what you're willing to share with us. No worries. I just wanted to be clear on, on which, which contractor it was you'd use. It, will be, uh, using the same. it will be Ron Pino because he knows the building, and uh, he is very, very dependable. Thank you. So even though you're going with the 23 no. are you asking, is it 80% of the 26 or 80% of the 23 it's 80%, uh, the way it's showing now is 80% of the 23. Okay, so that's but, that's but, your request. Right. Even though you're going to use the higher con uh, contractor that costs more. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Anything else? Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Okay. Why don't we hear from uh, the applicant or the representative of the creamery? Give me your name and address. 
Hello, I'm Jenny Tempest, and I live at Four Par Circle in Littleton. Creamery, great building. Looks really cute from the front now and functional, but the back of it is not very functional. And um, actually, on the the size of it, I want to extend it a little bit more. It's only about five or six feet inside. Um, I want to add a back door to it because there's no way to get out the back end of that building, only the front door. And um, I, um, it's part of, I know, what uh, Littleton is trying to do is also beautify the alleyways and now with the view house directly behind us. Unfortunately, this section, it does look like a shed type structure that was sort of, or perhaps a porch that was enclosed at one time. And part of it is up at the top, if you look at it, I've got a picture that shows where, it, you know, it's not falling away, but it is. There's space between the shed and the original building. And it does not have a foundation, doesn't sit on that, and that's sort of why it's I think falling away. In fact, the architect that I'm using is Bob Innes, um, and I have walked around that building a number of times with Carl Pappard, who knows everything about the history of all three of his buildings, and he and Bobby talked at length, and he was very impressed with how Bobby understood the historic significance of trying to keep the building all the way around, including with this addition you know, keeping that intact so it will look like it's part of the, uh, you know, still part of the original building. Um, I did get a third bid, sort of. He hurried with it. It's not an exacting bid, and I can give that to you. That's really high, though. Um, I, but I'll give that, like I said, to you. And that particular contractor did sort of draw what we had talked about on the structure and actually even with Carl who knows again about all of the buildings and the historic factors uh, changing oh okay yeah I don't know how to use that so I just, yeah, just lay it down okay. but changing the roof line a little bit so it goes with the um, current structure the the main building the reason I want to put in actually a new HVAC, whoops, a thank you. <laughs> you know, this is unusual being up here. So um, right now on the, bill, on the uh, pictures that Dennis showed you of the backside, there is a swamp cooler that um, has been on there for a very long time. It's old. And in fact, if you stand at the back while it's working, it's constantly dripping water down onto... Uh, the shed and so forth. So if I'm, uh, when I put in an HVAC system, a, a, an actual furnace with duct work and uh, air conditioning, and I've had, it was difficult to get in there with a particular HVAC technician or uh, in, uh, licensed technician to look at it. So we talked about it. The inspector I had that inspected the building absolutely loves the structure because of the larger, um, you know, the, the structural end of it, uh, the boards and so forth. They're not just the two by fours, they're like four by sixes, he said. So they can either go through the top with an HVAC, putting it in the attic, or even underneath in the crawl space. There's currently a crawl space on the main building. Um, but that will allow me then to raise that ceiling on the back portion so that it conforms with the current structure uh, roof line, and I think would make it look better. And I would like to extend it out to about 10 feet, actually, the whole structure to make it more usable. The, <laughs> the uh, current bathroom that's in there, Carl did say if I wanted, if I got rid of the toilet, which is an old, <laughs> he'd like to keep it for historic reasons, but <laughs> it does need to be re redone. Uh, the bathroom that's in there. So, and that's all in that um, addition at the back of it. The, um, and again, from the view house, and there's going to be a lot of people up there, and 
now that people are going up and down the alleyways, I think it's going to be a really good addition. And again, with Bobby's help, he knows I want to keep the integrity of the look. Um, there's a lot of rotting wood. Uh, there's pieces that are missing um, as far as up at the top of the original or of the roof line. It just, it just all needs replacing. So um, that's my intent. Questions? <laughs> Do you want me to give you this other bid? I'll give it to you. Um, again, he didn't really have time to sit there and do it like the other two bidders did. And I've got one more contractor going in on Wednesday. I'm going to show him exactly what you know we'd like to do and get a, a fourth bid. So, and I am very conscientious about trying to keep costs down. So, are all three or maybe four bids going to do the same look? Yes, okay. that is the intent. So it, you're taking. Yeah. This piece off that looks like the shed, the yes. ones that come down, yeah. and then putting that on. And putting that onto it. Putting a foundation in. Um, oh, on the one, actually, this one that I've got right here that's the third bid, he brought up, he said, well, why don't you put a basement in so you have some storage area? I went, oh, that'd be a nice, you know, just under this particular structure, because it is ranch, you know, there is no basement on there, and... I thought, that would be nice. But what I did, I added my own little thing. I asked him, I said, if we didn't do a basement, and that's so I could have like-to-like -like bids, um, what would it be? And he said it would be about a $30,000 addition if I did that. If I did that, that cost would be on me. You know, I'm not asking you all to do that. Would you like? Okay. <laughs> Questions? Um, is it your intent or your hope to provide public access from the alley? Um, right now there's a fence there. Uh, the current tenants I know want to try and have a secured situation. But, um, and the view house has now put a path in um, just to the east of our lot line using the Elks, you know, part of their parking lot. And I think eventually I would like to, yeah. Okay. I, it's such a pretty building. And we have a gazebo there. <laughs> It'd be nice if people could come and sit. But. And um, my other thought is, as I recall, well, do you have any plans for landscaping, or does your tenant have any, any plans for landscaping? Well, it's currently, you mean after we've done this yes. work? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Is it I going would. to be garden, flowers? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, right now, um, I think Carl had put in the flagstone path going all the way around it. Mm -hmm. So whatever we take out, I want to put back. Okay, thank you. Okay. This seems to be a pretty big project. Is the doing this project continue, continue um, dependent on the funding, the grant funding? Or are you going to go ahead and do it anyhow? Um, I might wait longer to do it. <laughs> so it would be, you know, it is an expensive project. So if I can. And what's your timing? Because you, they do need a COA, right, for this one? What is a COA? It's a Certificate of Historic Appropriateness. <laughs> and before, It's called a Certificate of Historic Appropriateness. Okay. And before you can get a building permit, uh, we need to have that in the file. It's gone through the board or through the staff, and they say yes, this meets the criteria that it is consistent oh, with historic character right. of the district. I and, didn't realize. That so you'd have to them. apply like we just saw earlier in the right. meeting. So right. do you have a timing in your mind for that? Well, I would like to start it, you know, almost immediately as far as applying for it and so forth. Okay. Um, I, I want to be very. Uh, cognizant of the tenants that are in there also, you know, and, and I want to work around them and make sure that it, it's not too disturbing, um, but I would like to get it done. And I saw in your application that that wasn't easy to get the contractors in there with the tenants, and is it, that going to be a problem, do you think? Or um, it, I don't think it will be now. They've started to be very helpful. That's how I'm now able to start getting some contractors in there. 
I think it would help them too. Have more room. Yeah. Any other questions? I guess one, Pam, back to uh, your question. We have some time constraints. Um, if we award grant money, that it must be used within a certain period or it's forfeited. Right. So, as you know, we have $50,000 to allocate, and you're asking for all $50,000. <laughs> so, if, again, the, I guess the question, and, and maybe it's tough for you to answer, is is there a lesser amount that you could use and still get the project done within time constraints? I haven't, I can't answer that right now, but, yep. you know, that's not where I was thinking at the moment, but sure. give me a couple days. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Any other questions? Jenny? Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Okay, and then our last one on the list, uh, the Duncan House, if you want to come up and talk about your request. Uh, I think I pretty much went over everything. I'm a little confused as far as what the continuance is going to mean and where we kind of move forward. Do I interface with staff or resubmit the, propo the proposal? Or how, does, how do I go forward? We can't talk about the continuance during this part of the proceeding, okay. but if you want to stay until after this has been closed, we can talk to you about how that'll work. OK. OK, fair enough. Thank you. And did anybody have any questions with regard to this grant? To the grant, not the COA. Okay. All right. Um, now, do we want to wait to discuss it next meeting? Yes. Or okay, so I, th I think you can. You've asked the questions at this point. Uh, unless you have additional questions, yeah, I think you wait to discuss it until the next meeting. So. And as is usually the case, we have more requests for money than we have money, so we have to make some sort of uh, decisions about that. So as you kind of think over what we're going to do for. We'll have a discussion next time in, in terms of how we're going to allocate those funds. Anything else before we leave the grant program? Okay. All right, so now uh, go ahead and hear reports from staff. And if those individuals that presented for either the COA and or the grant program want to leave, you're welcome to, or you can stay and listen to staff reports. The only thing I think I have tonight is just we have another outreach event coming up next week, Tuesday night. Um, so for city council, if uh, we, uh, Jocelyn and I went to the first one, we had the same thing that Kim and I had last year. Just a lot of people were extremely interested. Uh, it, it's amazing to me how many people know about the programs, know about uh, the tours, know about different things, and just have questions and are very excited to find out there is more going on and want to know more about the tours and want to know the timing and and like the brochures that we handed out. So uh, we're going to uh, be there again. If anyone else wants to join us, we'd love to have you. So if Kim's available or anybody else, it'd be wonderful. So. What time is it? Starts at 4 o'clock, I think. Is it? I think so. Kim, you've been our representative. Can you go next time, or should we have somebody else go in your place? It's in ink on my calendar. OK, so you're, you're good. Yeah, I'm counting on pizza and ice cream, so. Okay. <laughs> ice cream, you have to get there early. Last time, it, it, it was all gone. They had so many people. Oh, I got amazing. some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, uh, that's, uh, what is the name of the program? Is it Meet with City Council? It's a, um, meet and meet, Greet meet, and Eat. Meet and Greet, that's right. <laughs> meet, Greet, and Eat. Eat, meet, yeah. Okay. Eat, meet, Greet. Anything else, Dennis? No, I think that's it. Um, I wanted to go through the work plan and kind of some of the things are not appropriate, but kind of talk about that a little bit. Our latest work plan. So one of the things we've talked about uh, in terms of getting increasing participation in the Main Street Historic District, we don't have any real focused initiatives. It's kind of ongoing conversations. Does anybody have any thoughts about anything that we want to do on that specifically? Um, Michael's been talking with property owner, haven't you? About getting him in the district? Who is it you've been working with? Well, I've talked to a couple of people about landmarking, but I haven't really talked to anybody. About yet. joining the district? The district itself. Right. Dennis, any thoughts? Um, 
we've been pretty successful to date, I think. I think the brochure that you have is good. Um, I think nothing has changed on that, really. I think the outreach you're working on with HLI is, is really beneficial. Um, there's ongoing discussion about the post office being a landmark, not coming to the district because they're not within the opt-in boundary. Um, so, Speaking of that, is that progressing, the post office? Not that I'm aware of, no. So I've not heard that it's pressing at this point so in terms of time frame. Uh-huh. Right. I've not heard that. So I think the, the last we heard, HLI was going to get with, maybe you can find out at the meeting if HLI was going to work with the person who applied in Inglewood. Okay. And I don't know if that's happened yet. Well, let's see. I did talk to Diane Ray Tommaso at the Littleton meeting, you know, when we talked about the Littleton Boulevard right. corridor study a couple of weeks ago. And um, from my, she said she'd be glad to help. And HLI has, I think it's, it's in the fall and in the spring when you can actually apply with, you know, where, where the federal government gets involved. So they're going to be doing their write-up for national, you know, and working with the, the federal government as far as the getting a national landmarking. And then we'll use that here as the local landmarking. So it'll be in the fall sometime, Pam. What do you mean use the national for the local? Well, the... Uh, the application, you mean? The research. Yeah, the, the research application. Okay. and the application that, that's submitted. And Diane thought there probably were some things in the in the federal archives, too, that you know, would be available, too. So you know, yeah. she's done enough of this. She did the one for Inglewood, and, and she knows you know, how, to, how to access those resources. So uh, It's just I think there was a, I think it was an HLI person needed to talk to her, and that was seeming to be a little bit difficult for some reason. And <coughs> that happened. There's like vacations and this and that. And yeah, there's a lot, um, lot of vacations. Yeah, right, and like I think that. Gail is working on that. So um, I think it's what's happening. Yeah, Gail so. has been in contact with Mike Kaufman's office. Right. And, right. And they met with him. Yeah, correct. Okay. So you'll let us know. Yeah. And I don't think there's anything we can do. It's it's more their thing. It's just of interest. The national, and in fact, yeah. again, it's that kind of the arm's length discussion we have uh, because at some point you will be Hopefully, seeing an application come through for designation, you can't get terribly involved with it. It's again, yeah, I think you can help identify structures that you think are potential landmarks, and then if HLI can do the outreach and work on the application and stuff, that's the ideal. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, just a quick update. Uh, so identify structures for landmarking. That falls into that. The grant program we were working on, uh, walking tours. Uh, we could use somebody for next week and next month. It is Friday, July, July 7th. Uh, so far, I'm going to do the 5.30 tour. I didn't know if anybody else could do a tour. I'm that, down for the 6 o'clock. Oh, that's right. Okay, I'm going to put Kim. Be on vacation. So you're not here and you're not available? Not this time, but okay. I can in August. And, uh, and David, you're the and only one. And out in July as well as Okay, August. you're the only other one that's trained. So it, could you do the 6, the 7 o'clock, I could do the 6.30, and you could do the 7 or vice versa, or no? I don't think so. Okay, I'll Maybe tell them six. that we'll do, uh, we have two open slots. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'll, I can talk to HLI, too, about that. Oh, okay, will you tell them that we have a 5.30 and a 6 o'clock person, and we need the last two. Sure. Um, Margie was going to be there as a traffic monitor. She wasn't going to take a tour unless she had to. Mm -hmm. She's going to be a backup, and she was also going to speak to HLI. So. Yeah, and I just told her I would tell her who was available. And in terms of, let's just go one uh, further, Friday, August 4th. Dan, you said you'd do 530? I'm out in August. Oh. I'm out in August, too. Okay. So I'm doing a tour for Margie on the 20th, and then... Of July. Okay, and that's for the leadership group. Can anybody do Friday, August 4th? We're having trouble. I can. Okay, so Michael, should I put you here at 5 30? I'll do two if you want. I'll okay, do. I'll put Michael. You're out. I'm out. Right, you're out. Right, Kim. I'm out. August and September are difficult for me. And David, you're the only other one. I'm out as well. In August. Okay, so we have two slots open there. And then let, let's just keep going. We have the 16th of, uh, that's Western Welcome. And those are our tours. So that's North and South Side. 
Uh, Jolene said she could do a tour at four. We're thinking we want two. I can do a tour at four. Dan, are you here then? This is the week of the fourth, 16th? Yeah, no, what, what? Th Thursday night the 16th. We tend to get the... 17th. Is it Thursday night the 17th? That one. I have you down for six o'clock. Does that work after work? Yeah. Okay. All right, let me know. And David, you you out? I'm out as well. Okay, and you're out? <laughs> and you're doing it? Uh, you're out? I'm probably out, yeah. Okay, and I'm there. Okay? All right. Um, historic Preservation Awards, those are over. We won't be doing things. Oh, um, under updating the city's website, which isn't really updating the city's website, I had an idea mm -hmm. for Western Welcome, and see what you think. Instead of going with a full-blown brochure, could we just do a flyer, like a one page on Littleton, with a Littleton logo that kind of says who and what we are? I mean, nothing fancy. It literally printed off in color on a color right. printer. Sure. Can we do that? Do you think mm -hmm. that would get approved? Sure. And, and that would be for handing out in the booth? Or? Yeah. And you want to and know. The maps. the maps are always a big hit. Yeah. Instead of handing out the brochure that shows why you should join Main Street, mm -hmm. instead of doing I agree. That's this one, for okay, the general public. that we just do a one-pager, piece of paper like this in Littleton, mm -hmm. and just said, you know, who we are, a little, so, little information about designation, and that we could maybe do in two months, especially if we could ask staff to just print it off, or if we get lucky and put it in the printer, put it maybe on some nicer paper. But it, it's sure. n it's not a brochure; it's not, it's not pictures. Or we anything. set it upstairs. We get nicer paper. Yeah, so definitely. Is that something you want to work on, or do you want me to do it? Boy, I I'm. It's just really tough for me. Okay. Right. So now. why don't I take ownership of that? Maybe if you can. Maybe I can help. But I, yeah. I can maybe write it up, and if you can use. You have a chance to maybe do editing or something? Yeah. Okay. I, it, if not, my I, schedule is just really, really tight for okay. the next couple of months. I, I, let me get that. It, what would be the deadline that I would have to get it to you and approved, in other words, internally, hmm. so that we would have it printed and ready to go by Western Welcome? Um, August 17th. Uh, just for the printing itself, we, if you can get it in... A week in advance. That's if we're sending it to the print shop. If we're just doing it, if I'm doing it, bring it to me that afternoon. Um, okay, just something. Yeah, I, okay. Well, so. if you can look at it, great. If not, we'll just. I mean, I'll have to. I'm sure get it approved through the city somehow, so right. I can just. Let's just you know talk we'll, offline. We'll and, take it offline. Uh, okay. Because oh. I think we're we're really good with the work that we did. Mm -hmm. I, I was thinking of using that as a basis. Yeah, that shouldn't be too difficult. Throw a few historic photos in. Okay. Update the historic preservation just, pages on the website. Just you... from the experience that Jocelyn and I had at, at the last eat, meet, and greet, meet, eat, and greet, whatever it is, um, <laughs> the, um, the brochure, the part that we had added to that, which had the different websites, the different links to, to different resources was very popular. People were very excited about that. They really wanted to know about the, the app for the walking tour, historic walking tour that's an app uh, for their phones. They, that type of thing was uh, something they really wanted to know about. So it was, it, I think- And we, we could just focus, include that at the really bottom. emphasize that, yeah. Okay. You know, we can talk on Tuesday mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I can, kind of download all of this information. But you know, the, the app in this day and age may, may be the appropriate thing to mm -hmm. do is to literally direct people to the, the app. apps. Because yeah. vir virtually every, everyone that comes to this booth is going to have a phone. And you know, and, and yeah, and maybe we put, call that out, you know, and others. Maybe, instead, like, it, maybe we don't even need a brochure. Maybe we just need to direct people to that app. Or maybe we, are you thinking maybe a sign? I was thinking more than just the app. I was thinking of what uh, HPB Board does. does. Okay. A little bit about landmarking. Just really high level, like that brochure. Yeah, it could be. I mean, it, it, this, it could be like, well, we'll, we'll talk about we'll it talk offline. We'll talk about it, okay. Uh, okay, so preservation pages on the website. You're working on that, Dennis. Uh, 
entry signs for Arapaho Hills. Has there been any more discussion on that? There hasn't been. We have a new public works director at this point, so we'll go through it. I'll work with Tim Weaver. Tim's our, our resource on that. So I, I just need to do that and pick out a sign, and, and uh, Jocelyn's excited about it as well, so we'll, we'll get signs. Do we have budget for that? We, we can find budget for that, yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> um, what about the plaques? We kind of started on that and we yeah, started about and I think the discussion we had and Andrew had looked into that a lot in the uh -huh. past and and I think the discussion that the th we had you, know, that you right. and I had um, with Andrea and with Jocelyn was it's much more complex than when we think about initially I think it really gets into um, what plaques do we need to do an inventory of what do we have out there now in terms of what's on each building uh, what where would we want to put it um, do the property owners want it on their building? And if they don't want it on their building, what and how big should it be? Um, and Dave Flagg, who did historic preservation for years, but you know, way back when I was at the museum, and did the, a lot of the work on uh, Littleton Town Hall, said, it's got so many plaques on it now. <laughs> and you start to worry about the integrity of the building at some point, or you're, you're drilling into the, to the stone, you're drilling into the brick, you're doing all these things that you may not really want to do. Uh, but at the same time, I think as we look around and see other towns that have not only the apps, but these walking tours, and it just catches your eyes as you walk by and see a really great plaque that doesn't just say that it's a landmark, but gives you some information about the building and maybe has a historic photo and talks a little bit about the evolution of the building. That's, I think, what people really want to see, and uh, if we're looking for that angle, that's, that's more of a project. I think a lot of the information's in place. We have the information either from the earlier surveys um, or from work that the museum staff has done, and we have online. So a lot of the buildings, we have the information. It's more just inventory, what's out there. It's kind of a walking tour. So it's not a huge project in terms of time. It's just, you know, I think, putting this all together and making sure that we've got something that um, makes sense to us, finding material that people aren't going to steal and melt down. Um, and yeah, that kind of stuff. So you don't want a, a bronze plaque, for example. You want an aluminum plaque, for example, probably, the type, the type of thing. So um, so we used to kind of go through and figure that out and then get a budget for it and probably put it in the you know, budget if we can. So for so what I'm hearing, mm -hmm. first of all, we have to inventory what we've got. Mm -hmm. Then we have to kind of do a walking tour in terms of what would go where. Mm -hmm. And then see if the... Home, uh, the building owner would want to put it on their building, mm -hmm. what it would say. Is it just historical building or is it a history? Mm -hmm. And then I think there's the issue, too, that you mentioned who adheres it, who maintains it. Who's responsible for it. And who's exactly. a budget. Mm -hmm. right. Should I maybe have see if I can um, meet with Andrea and kind of, I don't know, see if we want to go forward with it, you know, maybe help her with the inventory, maybe do the walking tour and then come back or something so we can, we can certainly i'll talk to andrea about it first she is so swamped right now oh she's too busy uh, oh my goodness yeah so um yeah uh she's here till you know every weekend and until oh. eight at night so uh, and this is not a it's not a high priority but if i could help her mm -hmm. Um, well, I think if we just start collecting what we have, it'd be wonderful. Okay. Yeah, just start pulling the stuff from the surveys on the buildings we'd be interested in, uh, pulling the stuff off the website from the museum, um, you know, what they've done. I think there's a lot of information, and there's probably more. And if we then start um, working with the museum to find additional photographs, and we might even, if we have buildings that we don't have photographs for, if we do a call, you know, do something in the newspaper maybe, uh, in Independent, that's, or the in uh, our, the city newspaper just saying, you know, we don't have any historic photographs for this building. If you're connected to the family that lived here in, in 1900 or, or owned this building downtown, would you, do you have anything that you can share with us? Because a lot of that's out there in, in some places, but uh, we don't have it. So, uh, Spotswood House, for example, the, the woman who owns that and has owned it for 25 years has no historic photos and can't find them. And she knows who the family was. There are none in the museum. So she's got one picture in back that doesn't show the house at all. Uh, so she's got a picture of the family that lived there, but nothing. In, so it's that type of stuff that we might need to get real creative if we want historic photos of some of these buildings. So. Well, is this something the board want, given all these issues, limited resources, is this something we want to pursue or continue to put in the back burner? Well, first of all, I think what you've just described about soliciting photos is a really interesting idea, mm -hmm. plaque or no plaque. Mm -hmm. So that's 
kind of a nice parking lot idea. I'm wondering, um, before we come up with an entire program with, with what would be on the plaque and, you know, here's this, that, and the other, I wonder if the first step would be to gauge um, property owner interest to see if people even want uh, to go there. Um, and I agree, this, it's given everything that, that the city is working on right now and the board is working on, I would say it's, it's pretty low priority. So perhaps, you know, maybe at, at um, you know, a meeting of the, the merchants that we uh, attend periodically, um, you know, to just kind of float the idea or... That's a good idea. Yeah. That's a very good idea. And then those meetings move pretty fast, but maybe we could solicit information, you know, give out... Um, a name or number or something and say, you know, could you provide feedback after the meeting or at a later date? Yeah, they, I mean, you may, might, find, might find that, you know, they just don't want anything to do with it. So save everyone a lot of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great idea. Okay, I like that idea. Uh, speaking of hoodlum meetings, um, I went to the last one. It's always good. I, I just kind of talk about what we do at our meetings, get our message out, get them to know us, and they put us on the agenda and they become familiar with us. Uh, I know it's during the day. Um, I had you, Amy, for the next meeting. It's, I don't know if you can do that. Remind me of the date. It is the July 5th. Mm -hmm. Yes, July 5th, 8 to 9 at the town hall. And then if you are going to go, I need to have Greg put you on the agenda. Okay. I'll be and there. you can just talk about, you know, the grant program. Yep. Um, and... You know, we're going to have a booth at Western Welcome. I always talk about the historic tours. Okay. Uh, let me pass this around and see if anybody wants to go for future ones. Okay. And I think we're going to, uh, the meeting with City Council, it seems like it's going to turn over. The, and with Summer, Jocelyn kind of thought maybe after November that we would meet with them. And that would be something that would be nice to meet with the new City Council, maybe after the first of the year would make sense, Dennis? Mm -hmm. I mean, thoughts? I agree. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that anybody wants to bring up in terms of other HPB? Well, the only thing I would say is that I was really looking forward to coming to this meeting tonight because of the grant program. I think it's, you know, kudos to Littleton for doing this. I think it's great that we, you know, we're able to help uh, the uh, building owners to, you know, help maintain their building to make, it softens the blow of trying to keep it historic and, and create that sense of uh, place, that unique sense of place. And there's a lot of buzz now about downtown Littleton and what it represents and hopefully we've helped in that process. You know, it, it, one of the things I read in uh, one of the applications was that, you know, owning one of these properties is really expensive because of the maintenance. And, you know, I, I totally agree as somebody who, who has owned a very old house. <laughs> and um, bless their hearts, because one thing that I always think about when I look at these is that I'm so glad I don't live in Washington Park in that old house anymore because oh, <laughs> it was expensive. <laughs> and probably didn't get any help from the city, right? No. <laughs> Actually, I did one time. Oh, you got the, to... the city, fortunately, um, was working on the street and they chopped into the water main and the city replaced my water main, my water pipe, um, all the way from the street into my house. Wow. And it was like, Cool. Winning. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. That was great. The only break I ever got from the city of Denver. <laughs> nice. Uh, anything else, Dennis? Okay. I think we can go ahead and adjourn the meeting. We'll turn off the mics.